Good morning. This morning we're going to talk about setting materials. We're going to talk about a couple of different ones. Uh, first, we're going to talk about different chenilles, the so synthetic chenilles. I'm going to show you how to set uh, rubber legs properly. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's just a very simple trick that uh, very few people do uh, and they end up breaking their legs up. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is setting these new chenilles. In the old days we had kind of fuzzy little chenilles just wrapped around you know, cotton wrapped around two other pieces of cotton and it just made a fuzzy little body. Nowadays, you got UV polar chenilles, very popular, two or three different sizes. And then you've also got bait fish emulator, which is a really much longer. And this was different than regular chenilles in that it's sewn together, so everything's one direction. And I'm going to show you how to create tapers with that. But the first thing I want to talk about is just setting this stuff, because this new stuff's really cool. You're seeing it on lots and lots of flies. But you're seeing people putting it in and having a hard time making it the effect that they're trying to achieve with it because they're getting trapped inside the hook when they're wrapping it on there. So the first thing I'm going to show you, uh, let me get this set up. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to straighten it out to start with. Because when you see people wrap this stuff, they, they get going forward and you've got all this real picky stuff hanging out here, right? And you start wrapping it forward and they start trapping it around the hook. And there's a real simple way to stop that because obviously you're trying to get all this stuff out to the side. That's what you're using it for. So the first thing you can do is take, you'll see that this stuff, when it starts, it's going to come coiled up either like this or on a card. And it's going to have a kink in it. And this is just simply, it's, it's chenille but with longer pieces. So they take two pieces of cord and they put the material between it and then you spin it. So that gives you all this picky stuff out the side. Obviously, if it's spun, it's wrapped around like this. When you get it, and that's the inherent problem with these long ones. When you get this stuff, if you just take it, try to get them all in one direction right there. See how they're all in the bottom pretty much? And give it a stretch. Look at it. it now it's hardly any coil to it. If you got a little bit left, just give it a little bit of a stretch. Don't let it go. Like that. It takes that coil out. Same thing with the big ones. Like I said, they all come kind of twisted up. So what I do is I just... I kind of get them on one side, give it a pinch, you know, and stretch it like that. And now they're all on one side. They're not, I'm taking that spin out of it momentarily so that I can wrap it. So I tie it in and get it like this, right? So now everything's on one side. Not everyone, but almost everyone's on one side. So then you come in here and you get this stuff. Same thing, on, like you would with traditional chenilles, you kind of pick this stuff out before you wrap it in. I get it all, but I've got a working piece here. So then I come from the bottom and I tie it in, come forward. I got two good wraps on it. And now what you'll see is that most of that material, there's only a couple, is on one side. Just like when you wrap a hackle, you want the hackle going, you want the convex side or the, the side that's like this to your left, to the back of the hook. I want all this material, I want it all to go in one direction. I want all those fibers going that way. If they're spun around in a circle as I start to wrap this, what's going to happen? I'm going to trap these underneath each other. So I got it all set, so they're all facing to the right, or excuse me, it's all facing to the left. So they're all to the left back here, and you can see there's nothing on this side of the, of the cord. And that's what's going to stop me from trapping. So I go around a couple, and what you're going to see, it's going to want to go back, and it's going to want to start spinning. You just keep reaching around and pulling it like that and making sure you're not trapping the material. It's really quite, you've got to, you've got to manipulate it. You've got to come in here and keep doing that. But you can see most of it's to that side. So I get up here, and I get two or three. I usually make two or three turns, and I stretch every time. So I go two or three turns and I give it a set like that and I stretch it. That's anchoring that stuff in. Okay, so here we go. So now you'll see, instead of having them trapped in there, by the way, I just did that whole thing without my glasses. That is astonishing when you're blind. So when you look at that thing, now what you're going to see, and Johnny will close up on there, you'll see it's a nice tight little... It's really tight around the hook, so I'm not going to have a hook come in or a tooth come in and hook that stuff and break it because this isn't stuff. This stuff isn't strong. It's just cotton thread. 
So when you get, you want it really secure around the hook. And what you see is they're all standing up just like that, how they're supposed to be. You're not seeing a bunch of them trapped. If you just put it on there and start wrapping, you're going to trap about half these and you're going to lose all the effect. Now, if you're working with bait fish emulator, same thing, just a synthetic material, and it's all going to be one length like this. All right, and it's and it's not it's no longer spun, so you don't have to worry about that. This stuff will stay nice and flat, but it's all the same length, and it really is counter counterproductive for you to wrap it all at the same length. You want to have it build some bulk, so if you have shorter fibers at the back and you come forward, it'll build a little bulk for you, and you won't be you won't have as heavy of a fly. You don't need it to be all the way through that thick. You do not need all that material. So the way to create a taper with this is to lay it on the table. I've already done it actually. And I took a pair of scissors and I just simply started at the bottom and I cut a wedge. Okay, pretty simple. So now I've got shorter material at the bottom and I get to the long one at the top. So when you tie this in, simply tie it in at the back, you know, right where you would start. Tie it in there, do your shortest fibers and come forward. And what you'll end up with is just a, a halo of these things around that body material and that's what you're looking for it's super simple so got that out of the way time for as if I needed more coffee right ba -ba -ba -ba. No, just kidding now we're gonna tie rubber legs so we've got our this is gonna get I need a little bit of space here this is really one of the most common mistakes I see in fly tying especially when people are trying to do rubber leg, multiple rubber legs like on a girdle bug or something like that and you see them tie them in and one goes forward and one's back and it's it's almost like a guessing game and it's a real simple trick to stop that first and foremost if you're working with like crazy legs like these uh don't try not to break them if you're like if you're tying a sex dungeon or a circus peanut or something like that you know don't break them off you leave them long don't try to skimp on you know you're never going to use that excess. And pick these off so they stay, don't drop them, stay in one piece. It's a lot easier if you're working with these ends together than it is if you have six legs working against you. All right, so first thing you do, we'll have to go to glasses for that one. First thing you do, get them right in the middle and just go one wrap right over the top. Okay, we went from right to left. All right, see, it's one wrap. And then if you... Before you do anything, just leave it here. Get it positioned so you know that they're the same length or whatever you want there. Okay? Without any tension on your bobbin, come back and grab. Try not to get that stuff in there. And come the other way. So now we have one figure eight. One, two this way, right? And now don't do anything about tightening it. Just go one, two in front of it. And that's what's going to tighten the thread. The phone is for me. That's what's going to tighten the thread uh, tension around the legs. And so now you pull straight down. And what you're going to see is that the tension is perfectly centered. Instead of going one, two, and pulling on it and trying to start messing with all this, you end up with a figure eight and two turns in front of it. And as you squeeze straight down, all the tension is going to form back there. It's not going to twist. You can see those legs are perfectly set on the top. It never changes. It doesn't matter if it's round rubber or flat latex. It doesn't matter. It'll always make them set perfectly. So it's a single figure eight without tension. Then one wrap in front of it, the second wrap, and you pull right straight down. That will create the pressure on the figure eight all at the same time, and your legs will stay in one spot. Hope that helps you out. Thanks.